video, we will show you how to backup and protect your file share or NAS workloads using Beam Backup and Replication. To start protecting your NAS file shares, you need to configure the following components. First, you're going to have to add your file share. Beam supports backup of file shares from the following sources. Microsoft Windows or Linux managed server, supported enterprise NAS systems, NFS file shares, or SMB file shares. Then we have our backup proxy. The backup proxy is a component that sits between the file share and the backup infrastructure and operates as a data mover. Then we have our cache repository. This is a storage location where Veeam Backup and Replication keeps temporary metadata and uses it to reduce the load of the file share during the backup procedure. This is going to keep track of all the objects that have changed between each backup session, making incremental backups from the file share super fast and efficient. Lastly, we have our storage repository. This is the main storage location where you're going to store your backup data. Let's jump into the lab to demonstrate how to backup NAS or file shares with Veeam Backup and Replication. We are in the Veeam Backup and Replication console. Currently, I don't have any backup jobs configured in this environment, but that's going to change here shortly. But first, we're going to make sure that we add in our cache repository. To do this, you can simply right click on Backup Repositories and click Add Backup Repository. Next, we're going to choose which type of operating system type of a server we're going to use as our backup repository. In this example, I'm using a simple Windows server. We're going to choose a name for our repository. Since this is our cache repository, let's make sure that we identify it as such. We're going to choose our repository server. I'm going to find the path to the folder that I created to store this cache. You have some additional settings here that you can also set. Click Apply and it will go through the configuration steps. This may take a few minutes to get configured. Now that we've added on our cache repository, we're going to want to add in our file share. First, we're going to choose what type of file share that we're going to back up, whether it's a file server, a NAS filer, an MNFS share, or an SMB share. In this example, we're going to back up our SMB share. Next, we're going to specify the path to our SMB server. If it requires access credentials, you can enter them here, or if you already have existing credentials stored, you can also put that here as well. Next, we're going to choose the backup proxy that we want to use to move this data to the repository. If you have multiple backup proxies in your environment, you can select specific ones through this wizard at this point in time. Next, we're going to choose our cache repository. Let's click Apply and get our file share added into the Veeam Backup and Replication console. Great, now we've added in our file share. As you can see, it's right there and ready for us to back up. To create a backup job, you simply click the backup job tab on the top of the screen and scroll down to file share. We want to create a name for our job. Since we're backing up file shares, let's just make it file backup job 01. Next, we're going to add in our file share. You can back up the entire file share, or you can just back up a specific folder in that share. In this example, I'm going to go ahead and back up the whole file share. Next, we're going to choose our backup repository. This is where we're going to store our backup data. We can also keep all file versions for a specified number of days or months. Another option we have is to configure a secondary destination for this job. This will allow you to, within the wizard, provide a secondary copy of your backup to be created once the job happens. In this example, I'm not going to do that. But we also have some advanced settings that you can specify for the job. 
regarding ACL handling, uh, storage maintenance, and uh, scripts, and also you can enable notifications. Next, you can choose to add an archive repository. This is just going to allow you to archive older file versions for a number of years within your backup infrastructure. Lastly, we're gonna make sure that we set a backup schedule. You can run the backup daily at a specified time every day, monthly, or you can even run the job periodically. Say, for example, you wanna back it up every eight hours or every 12 hours. That is also a possibility within the wizard. Next, we're gonna click Apply, and we're gonna see a summary of the job that we just created. We're gonna make sure that we run the job when we click Finish, and now the job will start and begin to run. If we right click on this job, we can take a look at statistics and see the backup steps as they are performed during the job. I hope this demonstration helped you start backing up your file share or NAS workloads. Thank you for joining and I hope to talk to you soon.